Scuttlebutt is you took out six Klingon warriors in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Can't believe everything you hear. Please sit down. I'm Cadet Sylvia Tilly. Uh, this is my mentor, Michael. So we were talking about making a video blog together. We're both space enthusiasts with this puppy too. One of us is a scientist, the other one is just... <laughs> so you think we'll be ready by November? One of the first things we wanted to talk about is the Rukia mission. We wish the Axiom 1 crew Godspeed. Thanks, Mike L.A., for your uh, leadership as well as commander of the Axiom 1 mission. Why do you think it was interesting other than the fact that it was the first? It's the first time that you have a former NASA astronaut and ISS commander working for a private company. Mm. Mike L.A. Lopez is actually a former NASA astronaut and commanded uh, the other missions, I think, and also the commander of the International Space Station. Space Station and also the A lot of astronauts, when they leave the core, the astronaut core in NASA, they don't necessarily know what they're going to do. But it's not really a closed deal. What are they supposed to do once they're not an astronaut with NASA? So this opens a completely new avenue for them to work in commercial companies. And I think some of them are really looking forward to continuing their space exploration via this mechanism. NASA is going to focus on deep space mission, we're going to the moon, to the moon, we're going to Mars. They will not need as many astronauts as they need today. Because NASA, if you're doing deep space missions and things like that, you don't need a lot of human resources to go to space to do deep space. If you're focusing on deep space. And if you're focusing on the moon, it really depends what you want to do on the moon. And you don't need a lot of people on the moon, especially if you don't have any fancy program or planning to do big research stations on the moon. NASA is heading back to the moon, but this time, instead of taking one step, they're hoping for a much longer stay. It's been 50 years since Neil Armstrong took that fateful step, pronouncing those 10 words that changed the history of spaceflight. One small step for man. So, first things first, we go to the moon, and we build the first extraterrestrial human colony on familiar ground. We perfect the art of colonization on easy mode before we jet out to take our place among the stars. That doesn't mean it will be a walk in the park, but it is possible. And we can do it in a matter of years, not decades. So you're not gonna need a lot of people. How many people is a lot? How many people is- 20. Uh, 20 is a lot? 20 on the moon, American astronaut, that's a lot. That's a jump like unbelievable jump for NASA and they're not they're not aiming for that Plan number one for actually having people live outside of low Earth orbit is the Gateway Station. This is by far the best part of NASA's whole Artemis program. It's much more clever than the whole SLS thing. NASA wants to use a space station in orbit around the moon as a staging ground for missions to the surface. Then for the first stage of colonization on the moon, people will be going back and forth from the surface to the gateway. The gateway takes a lot of pressure off of building a more permanent structure on the surface. There is always a safe place to retreat if something goes wrong, and it's just a very short flight to get there. So we don't need a lot of people. <laughs> You need those people, you need backup people, and you need people in the, in the support center who know what people on the ground are experiencing. Yeah. Um, so, so you need like this core of, you know, let's say, you know, 50 to 100 people who have space. Interesting, groups. yeah. If you don't have substantial missions from the NASA point of view. I mean, you, you're NASA for crying out loud. You put a man on the moon. You're geniuses. You're, you're the guys that think his shit up. I'm sure you got a team of men sitting around somewhere right now just thinking shit up and somebody backing them up. You tell me you don't have a backup plan that these eight Boy Scouts right here, that is the world's hope, that's what you're telling me? You think that we'll have humans landing on the moon, uh, private astronauts? Yes. Four companies? Yes. I assume you sent for me because somebody told you I was the best. Well, I'm only the best because I work with the best. You want to expedite and advance, let's say, uh, minerals and mining. Okay. 
sure. there's nothing in the astronaut corps that trains them to do that. And how will they get trained for that? We'll send them to the asteroid, they'll land, they'll drill a hole, they'll drop some nukes, take off and detonate. If you want to advance the American flag, then you send an astronaut, which physically and mentally can endure everything and anything and get the mission done. But if you're a private company, what do you really care about? You want your technology working and you want to get the stuff back to planet Earth. And you want the people to come back too. And you want the people to come back and you want people to know the job. That okay. specific job. You're not interested in making sure that they're ready for every scenario in the But they world. should be. Once the price of getting people to the moon is not so high, then human life are not as precious as they used to be. Say more about that. Uh -huh. Precious or expensive? What what did you mean exactly? I mean both. For NASA to send an American astronaut, it's super expensive to send them or yeah. her to the moon. Uh -huh. So obviously you want to you know make sure that the package arrives safely and everything is well taken care of and everything. But a private company looks at things quite differently, doesn't it? It cannot afford, you know, that it will cost forty billion dollars to send someone to the moon. That won't happen again. Once you have Starship, you don't need anything because Starship is a Starship, but also a, okay, it's a now. space station, a moon base at the same time. Could be, however, we still need to see that happening. What I'm sure. saying is that what you're talking about is saying, look, the transportation mode affects where you're gonna be and how long, and that's correct. So if you had a mechanism with which you would have a dragon take you to the ISS and then you would have something else docking at the space station and that thing will take you to the moon then stopping at the ISS on the way makes to the moon sense. makes sense. Sure. But if you have a starship that takes you directly to the moon, yeah. why stop anywhere? You exactly. You getaway project and all those things. There's no point. You go, you land, you come back. Sure. That starship was not intended for the moon. It was always directed to get to Mars. Yeah. So that's an interesting concept as well. Because Starship, it's a platform for anything. It'll be a gas depot, it'll be a moon base, it'll be a Mars base. It will be a an Earth-to-Earth -Earth jumping I'm, mechanism. It's not going to be all these things. Well, but NASA already is paying for Starship to go to the moon. Yes. It's not a then the moon. No, first the moon. Mars. Meant to go to Mars. Mm -hmm. One the moon. Yes. Doesn't mean anything about Mars. It's still... They're building two different starships for them. When do you think we're going to Mars? We should put people on the surface of Mars in this in, within a decade. I think One it would decade. be in this decade. Yes. People on the moon sooner. I mean, I think about going to the supermarket. You think about going to Mars. Do you think there'll come a time when we're all of that mindset? I think we need to get a large delivery to the surface of Mars, and then people will start thinking harder about it. And then I think within five or six years, people will see that that will be a real place to go. But so, and when we land on the moon, we're gonna keep Starship on the moon. It's not gonna come back. Why wouldn't you want it back? Be because it gives you a base and you can stay there. It's not gonna be expensive because Starships already will not be expensive. That's the breakthrough that we had. Mm -hmm. What's not expensive? Space shuttle, cost per launch, approximately $1.5 billion. Starship, cost per launch, approximately $2 million. When the space shuttle was in operation, it could launch a payload of 27,500 kilograms that the cost per launch 1 kilogram was about $54,500. Starship will be able to carry up to 150 metric tons and according to the Elon Musk assumption cost per launch, 1 kilogram will be even as low as $13.